Hey guys, welcome to Path of Exile, something that you have may or may not have seen me stream a couple times and I'm finally bringing it to YouTube, mostly because having trouble streaming, but it's also the big 3.0 release. Uh, and I have Pat here. Hello everybody. So why is it something that I felt I could bring to YouTube now? Well, before it was basically four acts in the game. Uh, and when you finish the fourth act, then you'd be sent back to the first act on a higher difficulty setting. Uh, and you repeat the game two more times, so it wasn't really like... It was ARPG-ish, like, it's... It's a... Uh, it it, it was... very much replayability. I mean, it, it did, but, I mean, we played it for fucking 2,000 hours or something. Well, no, you have 1,700 hours on Steam, and the game wasn't always on Steam, so I'm sure you've got, like, 4,000 hours. Yeah, I got a little bit out of it. Let me just say that. But A little bit. But, so, uh, 3.0, what does that mean? Uh, well, they realized it was actually a major falling of the game. People would basically drop out when they realized that they would have to play the game again. So they decided to make six more acts. whoop de fucking do um, So you do not repeat the game anymore. Uh, and so there's a lot of lore and story, and it's actually a lot of fun. So I figured, yeah, this is actually the good time to bring it to YouTube, so... Uh, this entire run is probably going to be more uh, new player set, uh, focused. Um, even though I've played the game a lot, uh, I'm going to kind of go into some of the... like Because it, it's a free game, and so, if, I mean, if you haven't played it already, there's probably some reason for that. Maybe you're not into ARPGs, you know, but you'll still get the story out of this. It's also a story kind of run. I'm not going to look at all the dialogue available, but it mostly just the required stuff, like when a character starts talking... We will listen to it, and you'll get about, like, I'd say about 80% of the lore out. Um, and the last 20%, go fucking play the game yourself. It's it's free to play. Uh, not, like, free to pay, but actually free to play. It's like, uh, all the microtransactions are cosmetic in this game, so there's really no reason not to try it, but, you know. Fuck, I don't know why you haven't played it already. This ain't no Maple Story, kids. We're, we're free to play, not pay to play. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, let's let's get started, then. So I have a couple of characters, but we're going to be starting with a new character here. And, uh, oh yeah, the Challenge League. So generally how it works uh, for Challenge Leagues is um, we have Standard and Hardcore. If you've never played an ARPG, uh, Hardcore is basically Permadeath League. But in this game, it's a little bit different. It's basically you die in Hardcore, you get sent back to Standard. So you can imagine the economy is great there because <laughs> fucking people just send their, character, their characters back for fun sometimes. So... It's not perma perma death, but being in like getting sent back to Strandard, it might as well be uh, perma death uh, in in this game. Uh, but we don't play uh, we don't play perma death. I actually we we used to play it. Uh, me and Pat a lot uh, actually. Yeah, we used to we used to just exclusively do hardcore because it used to be like challenging. But then we kind of kind of grew a little bit. We just got we got tired of perma death stuff, so um, we don't play no, hardcore. Scrubs. We don't, yeah, we don't play hardcore, and don't feel bad because it's really there's no difference between hardcore and softcore anymore. So, anyways, uh, so all this stuff on the left here, um, if you're new to the game, just fucking ignore this stuff because you don't actually want to play standard or or hardcore or anything here. And if you're a new player, you really don't want to play hardcore. So, um, what they do is they do these four month uh, challenge leagues. Uh, it's a good time to start up the game whenever they come out with new challenge leagues because that means like there's some new content, fresh economy. All that kind of stuff that may not matter to you, but um, if you don't want to talk to anybody, there's this little option here called Solo Self Found. It means that you can't party or trade with anybody, so literally, it is just you. Um, Iron Man mode. But you can you can put yourself back to like a regular character in, in like the Challenge League if you want to. Uh, I mean, these kinds of games are best played with friends. That's why I have Pat here to fucking. I don't know. Basically, you know, answer all the shit that you forget. Like, what is a keystone? Yeah, be a be a, be a fucking voice in my head. Uh, but yeah, so I would definitely play around the challenge leagues and whatever it is at the time uh, of whenever you play this, you just play the softcore one. I would suggest. But I mean, if uh, the thing is, if you get put, if you die in hardcore challenge league, you actually get sent back to standard. So that's why I would actually suggest doing this one. But that's just me. Uh, cause I just, I don't care about the supposed challenge of hardcore. I just, I, like most of the rips I think we had were like fucking server instability and other bullshit. So, I mean, it happens. Like it's a, it's uh -oh, a game a where you tornado went through quick. my house and my internet locked <laughs> out. So now, now I'm dead. A tornado went through your house. All right. 
Anyway, so that's that's it for how the challenge leagues work. Um, and at the end of the league, by the way, you'll get put back to standard or hardcore if you manage to make a character in hardcore. As I said, don't. I wouldn't really bother with it. And anyways, uh, so yeah, let's uh, do that. And we're not playing solo cell phone because we're playing with Pat. Pat is going to join us on our little venture. And um, here are our classes. Uh, ignore the one in the middle, even though I think that's what Pat's playing. Ye yeah, uh, boy. Yeah. Uh, it, we'll get more into what this stupid class is. But generally speaking... Uh, you have, you should have the, the six on the side here and you got your bow character, you got your kind of like melee agility kind of character. You got your fucking, I like to hit things character. Um, and this would be the, uh, uh, the spell caster and, and there's a whole bunch of stuff and like critical strikes and crap like that. And, and, and I don't even know where the Templar fits on that, but he's a fucking, he's a class. He's an old man with no pants. That's all you need to know. All right, but we're, we're going to be playing the Duelist because I think that's actually probably one of the better starting classes. We're going to play like a kind of a melee-centric build, but I have nothing set in stone because I feel that, um, you know, I, I had trouble choosing a first build and then Pat suggested Duelist. And I said, you know what? That's actually a good idea because what I like is not necessarily what everyone likes. But I like to think I said something like that, but it was probably more along the lines of fucking, yeah, let's do it. So that sounds about right. This isn't a dialogue for this. You were born to be swift and strong. What did you do with your gifts, Duelist? You squandered them on self-indulgence. Sin has led you here. Your path inked in the blood of gratuitous murder. You have betrayed the Grand Arena. Now Rayclast shall be your audience and your foe. All right, so that's done. Um, sorry, Pat couldn't hear me there for a second, so let's go get into the game. And uh, as you see, I, I did a belly flop, and you see that there's a stranger here that um, sent me an invite. So let's go block. Let, let's go block this uh, this this gentleman here. Hey, hey, screw you, Mike. Don't ever accept uh, uh, party invites from strangers. Oh, it actually went away. <laughs> 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 so. Uh, I'll get to that in a second. So, uh, yeah, we start on the beach. We get to just we did like a belly flop apparently out, out of a ship or something. And uh, it's every RPG opening in it ever. I got my sword, and I'm gonna go talk to dying exile. <coughs> you and I, we're the only ones that made it to shore, alive anyway. Looks like you found something you can defend yourself with. Good. This place is crawling with criminals. There's smoke rising just east of here. Could be worth checking if there's... Oh no, he died. Pat, he died. Mike, Mike, do you think he lived up to his name? Even the dead rise to challenge me here. Dying XL. Well, yeah. he was dying. He wasn't dead yet. Well, yeah, but he was, you know, dying and he died. So he lived up to his name. So the gem system in this game basically goes like, oh hey, you can put gems like this little attack here called Double Strike, and now I have Double Strike on my thing. And unlike Diablo 2, which is probably another ARPG you may have or may not have heard of, uh, you can remove the sockets. So I can take it out as much as I like. There's no penalty whatsoever. Actually, Torchlight did the same thing. That shouldn't even be a sarcastic Did they? Um, I never actually played Torchlight for very long. It was yeah, boring. You can either salvage the gems or the equipment. That's how it worked. But the gems weren't attack gems. Oh boy, I can't wait to destroy my shafts to get my double strike back. Oh yeah, that's exactly how it worked. Uh, oh, let's go party up with Pat, so I'm just gonna accept his little party invite there. So, uh, here we are on the beach. Fucking lovely beach. We're gonna just ignore all the zombies, because we don't like talking to zombies. <laughs> are you having a lovely stroll on the beach? Oh, of course, yeah. The new water effects and everything, it's, it's glorious. And here we have a large chest and we can't go forward, I think. Yeah, it prevents me from going forward. It's like, bitch, you need to click the chest. You need to learn! So we just kill these two zombies because they're going to annoy me while I'm talking. And it's telling me, oh god, we're using mana. Okay. So, uh, this is a very core part of this game. This is why they introduced it into this, uh, well, uh, into this tutorial. Uh, we have here a chance to bleed support gem. And actually, uh, the first line actually tells you what it is. It's an attack. Uh, but it's a support gem, so it's meant to be hooked up to something that isn't a support. 
which is uh, this thing, it's a skill. So this one says here, support attacks have 25% chance to cause bleeding. Um, and then you do more damage as bleeding and it does a little bit more damage. So we kind of kind of just toss that in there. And it'll increase the mana cost by a little bit. What's the roll multiplier? One t 110%, so just like 10% more mana. I mean, it's like five mana, who cares? But now my double strike has a chance to go as bleeding, so that's kind of nice. And so um, the game has a lot of depth with regards to having a lot of support gems hooked up to a singular skill. Uh, which is kind of neat. Uh, I'm sure we'll get into that uh, as we progress through the game, but uh, for now there's a giant boss guy, so we're gonna go kill him. And he bitch left us. So now now we're supposed to use flasks. Uh, so yeah, the flask system in this game is like, um, it's charge based, and it's charges based it's upon... Nice not to be dead yet. It's nice not to be dead yet. It's charges based upon things you <laughs> kill. Uh, and going back to town refills your potions up to maximum, but you get five potions, and I can use each one like three times, basically. Yeah, each one three times. It tells you charges. Uh, one charge is basically one kill, and certain monsters can give more charges. Basically, they'll just refill as you kill more. Sorry, were you saying something about? I was just going to say, there's a lot of theory crafting that can go on in this game, not with just with the support gems, but with what you're probably about to figure out just now. Oh, yeah. Alright, so we're going to just pick up all these items. And, um, we got a nice yellow weapon, I guess. Uh, so I guess I'll go identify that. Oh, Holy boy. Holy shit. It has stuff in there. Fuck. But, maybe maybe I'll do some dual wielding. But I actually really want, like, a, a nice two-ended weapon. Uh, but, anyways, now to get into the passive tree. Now, if you've heard anything about this game, uh, the passive tree is probably... Passive what this jungle. Yeah, it's probably what this game is uh, famous for. Um, so, like, you know, look at this. Oh, it's not so bad. You know, we start here, we get two choices. So do I want some life or do I want some attack speed? I think I'll take some attack speed. But uh, when you scroll out, it kind of turns into fucking this. And this is what maybe turns some people off in the game. They don't really, they're like, how the fuck am I supposed to learn this shit kind of thing? But here's some important things to know. Where you start on the tree to, is dependent upon your class. Uh, I'm a duelist, so I start in between like the big strength guy and the big like dex girl that uses bows and stuff. So I can use bows, or I can use giant maces, or I can use something in between like an axe or a sword, which is like faster, maybe more accuracy based, maybe has some crit there or something. And that's what I'm kind of good at. Uh, so I'm not necessarily like super tanky, and I'm not necessarily super fragile. I'm just kind of like kind of in between. Um, and up here you have like the witch, the end character, you know, sp like all her nodes are basically related to like spell casting, things like that, increased fire damage, things like that, uh, spell critical to strike chance. Um, and the thing you really have to keep in mind when you're starting this game out is like you don't have to look at all this and go like shit am I gonna have to go up here for some fucking stupid shit? No. Now generally speaking if you're kind of playing a certain kind of class archetype like bows or something like it's going to be in the, in, the, in the type of uh it's going to be in the starting tree so what you do is you just scroll in and this is what we focus on at least at least for the first couple levels and what i always do is i kind of look at these kind of larger nodes you notice how these nodes are kind of um larger than the other ones here it's they're kind of notables uh and so th that's what i usually focus upon so this one's kind of nice oh it gives you 12 percent attack speed uh Ignore all movement uh, penalties from armor. Oh, that's kind of good. Oh, this one gives like 1% life regen and some strength and some damage and some weapon range. Oh, that's good too. You know, like these things like 4% attack speed, like who cares? These are just there to get me to the, the kind of slightly larger nodes. And you can even see the kind of structure, um, some of the later nodes around that. Like this one is damage with two-handed weapons. Here's some more damage with two-handed weapons. Like everything actually kind of makes sense. Um... And they're all in, like, so the same place. Like, this has a giant shield symbol. This is stuff related to shields, if I want to use a shield. Um, th things like that. So I would start by looking at these slightly larger ones and then working your way towards the ones you like. Now, there's an even bigger node that you can get, uh, or bigger nodes that you can get. And these are the keystones, as Pat puts them. Uh, and they they usually have some sort of downside. And the downside is either it's in the description itself, which is... Uh, this is iron reflexes. This converts all evasion rating to armor. Um, so basically, your your evasion then becomes basically physical mitigation rather than dodging. Um, and the downside is you can't really dodge that much anymore, obviously. And and but you also have to spend the points getting here. So I mean, this is a new one here, Crimson Dance. 
where you can inflict bleeding up to eight times, uh, which is, you saw me have a bleeding uh, ability on my skill now, but it does less damage and things like that. So typically you can kind of look at all these and kind of determine what you kind of want to work towards. And in the case of this build, we're actually going to be kind of going up here. This is a really big one for us. Uh, your hits can't be evaded, but you never deal critical strikes. Uh, this build that we're doing here, we don't really care about uh, crits. We're not working on, cr on critical strikes at all, but we kind of do care about accuracy. But this makes it so we don't have to care about accuracy. And I mean, if we're not dealing crits anyways, then who cares? So in, for this build, you're going to see me kind of going through the tree, but and for two-handed stuff, because two-handed weapons are really cool. But the end goal is actually to make it over to here, which is Resolute Technique. Uh, well, not end goal, but like it's like a mid-game uh, goal. Probably about Act 3 or 4 uh, will hopefully make it there. And that's pretty much it. And Pat's class starts in the middle of the tree right here, and it makes no fucking sense. Because <laughs> so. I do nothing well and nothing uh, horrible, so it's just amazing. We, we debate if it's even like a fucking worthwhile class to go, but apparently he's uh, decided it is a worthwhile class to go, so... Hey, who am I to who am I to say anything to Pat? You you're know? you're the person that says a lot to Pat, actually. Yeah, uh, I I hate your fucking I hate the cyan, but you know what? We're gonna probably fight about that some other time. I don't want to confuse you too much with what he's doing. Uh, just know he is playing with me and waiting for me in town. So let's go uh, check out what he's doing. And he's gonna fucking dance here. In what true happened? MMO style. Do I have the dance stuff? I don't think I do. Just do slash dance. No, I don't have the dance stuff. Not for the <laughs> duelist. Well, that's because you're not a pay to win. Yeah. You're not a corporate shill. I'm not a corporate shill. Uh, well, anyways, I'm gonna go talk to a couple of characters. Little Pat just stands here awkwardly and looks at me. So, peace. Fine work with Hillock. Where'd you learn to fight like that? No, forget I asked. We exiles have no history. Dominus took it from us when he had his blackguards dump us in the water out there. Here, got something for you. Should help you kill a few more of those undead bastards. Uh, don't bother thanking me. The way I figure it, the longer we fighters live, the longer everyone lives. Alright, we got our first ability here that we can kind of get. And so, it's like I said, you look at that first line, it kind of tells, it gives you an idea of what it is. Shrapnel shot, lightning, attack, AoE, bow. Oh, it's a bow ability. I'm not using bows. This one's projectile attack, AoE, melee, fire. Okay, I could use that. It's an attack and melee. Uh, and cleave here is attack, AoE, melee. So cleave is more of a thing that can be used for dual wielding. Um, I kind of like the idea of ultra strike better, but I do have two weapons, so... I guess we'll, uh, I guess we'll fuck around with cleave just because of, that's the way we have it now. So I took that gem, and... Stay sharp out there. On to the next guy. A dashing duelist. Drenched and deserted on the dreary strand. That's the first line of the poem I'm writing about you, Exile. Easy, lad. You could lacerate a bloke with a look like that. The name's Bestel, captain of the good ship Merry Gold. Alas, my Merry Gold is gone. My crew is uh, gone. But my wits remain after a fashion. <laughs> Now there's a face I never expected to see in exile. The maidens of Oriath must be wailing in their beds now that their mighty duelist has left them. Or is that why you're here? Did you perhaps choose the wrong bed in which to celebrate your conquests? I'm Nessa, and I suppose I should thank you for ridding us of Hillock, that putrid giant you felled out there. Back in Oriath, I disdained your kind. In Rayclast, I don't have that luxury. Lion Eye's watch isn't much. But it's ours. We could use you here, while you live. But should you wish to venture out, do just one thing for me. Out on the coast, amongst the wrecks, there must be a ship's medicine chest. I have many to care for. And there's only so much I can do with herbs and seawater. Be well. There's an island, a hop skipping a wade offshore of the terraces. That's where my merry girl ran aground. Watch the locals spit roast the ship's doctor, but his medicine chest might still be there amongst the splinters and bones. It'd have everything Nessa might need. Dr. Shaky Hands Optin was lousy with a scalpel and even worse with a saw, but he knew his apothecary. Explains the Shaky Hands, if you ask me. All right, we got our first quest and all that kind of bullshit. So 
Uh, let's take that cleave gem that we got and, like, put it on some things. Now we can kind of, like, rearrange some of this bullshit, so... Let's have cleave on right-click, and left-click we'll have double strike and write down nothing for Greetings. the other one. I'm just gonna sell all the crap we have here, which is gonna give us scroll fragments. Stay sharp out there. Just currency items, but that's okay. Come on, Pat, out to the coast. Oh boy, are we actually gonna play a video game? Yeah. I don't know, I feel like this Not LP is sponsored by someone. Arenas. I wonder what it's sponsored do. by. I don't know, what kind of mouse do you use? Uh, I don't know, I use a Razer mouse. Because uh, Razer makes good products that don't break and then, you know, don't crack when you just slightly put your hand on it. Fucking sellout? Apparently you can hold shift to attack while moving, without moving, so you just do that. Just about oh, to get the tutorials learning. out of the way. Alright, so we got some gems to level up. Let me just kill this fucker who's on my ass. So, uh, the way it works in this game is you have to actually just bend your, like, left click over here to level up gems. Uh, there's a reason why. Because maybe the mana cost goes too high, um, maybe you can't support it, maybe you don't have the stats for it. But you can right click to get rid of the messages, and then, like, it'll kind of show up here instead for you to level up manually. And if you want to do it later and are kind of just tired of seeing it on the right side of your screen. There's many reasons you may not want to, but generally speaking, yes, you do want to level your skills every time. But there's some cases like Leap Slam, like, you maybe don't want to level Oh shit, Harbingers! The League. Oh shit, League specific. There's also a couple skills that have, like, level dependent stay. things that happen. That you might want to get to a specific level, and then just stop. Or ones that have effects that approx lower or less often at certain levels. Okay, you're, ma you're right. making it far more confusing than it needs to be. Ba basically, just there's really- it. There's no fucking reason you'll want to ever do that. Fine. Oh wait, that's the that's the harbinger right there. Uh, I don't think we can. I don't think we can actually do damage. To, uh, never mind. We got binding shards and transmutation shards. Basically, anything that looks like it's fucking shiny, uh, probably just pick it up and just throw it in your stash. You never know when you'll need it. Particularly these uh, kind of like more orangey ones, or what is it, brown? Yeah, because you forgot orange. to mention, there's no currency in this game. Everything is based off okay. of like there is currency. Materials. There is currency, but it's not gold. It's, like, it's all crafting materials. It's all like the currency can be used. But well, we'll get into yeah, that. I, I didn't forget about it. Well, I mean, I guess technically you saw me at the beginning of the game identify an item. And scroll it wisdom is suits me. a type of uh, thing that you can use to uh, to identify items. It is a currency item. So here's an iron ring. I'll, I'll equip that. I have a ring slot there. We also have another skill point. I'm doing, I'm gonna get the other side of this because this is a lot of physical damage too. The two points are actually kind of nice. Oh man, just the one point I think is good enough. Yeah, you're the professional gamer, Mike. You can be good at games when you want to, and I, I trust you on this. Yep. Oh, here we go. We have a portal scroll. We can kind of pick up that guy. Oh, chromatic oh. orb. Oh, oh transmutation. We're getting all the fucking currency items today. All exactly. Right. Ooh, and then a shabby jerkin, the best currency item. Oh yeah, oh, fucking armor piece. All right. <laughs> so portal scrolls create portals to town. Yes, it is a currency. It is a kind of currency. It's a one up from a, a wisdom scroll. You got things like this: reforges colors on on a, on a, a socketed item. So like this red gem, I can't put in this armor, for example, because it needs a red socket. So you can re-roll it. Uh, for the most part, you don't want to waste a lot of this early on. Uh, but yeah, there's a orb of transmutation upgrades a normal item to a magic item, and these ones are just all this shit is just shards of real currency items. So we gotta wait till we get a couple more shards, then we can use them. Now we're on the lookout for a nice 200 weapon, uh, and so far Iron Jesus has not been kind to us. You just gotta pray harder, Mike. Oh, we got our first boss of this area. Oh, uh, she's not a required boss, but she's just here. And she's fucking dead. fucking dead. Well, we got a mall here, but I think that all of my weapons won't use it. What? I, I, I don't- I can't use a mall, because, uh... This one I says here- I strong enough for that. Well, no, Cleave says it, it- it won't- it won't work with, uh, mauls. It says only swords and axes. Ah, uh, but you really regret not picking up Molten Strike now. I don't give a fuck, because I hate oh, both okay. of those abilities. I mean, early uh, on, it's just you just use whatever you feel is like nice. Like I got one single target ability, and I got one uh, kind of like AOE ability. 
I mean, that's good for now. My spirit is spent. Iron hat. That would be good. Oh. Now I look like a fucking. I don't even know what I look like. You look like a bread basket. Yeah. <laughs> bread basket. You do. So I like. Our first option area is going to take us down here. It's always kind of below the the waypoint, and that's uh the tidal island, which is what our first mission is all about. Our first optional mission, you mean? First optional mission. Impaled corpse, tell me your you, secrets. You need to stop desecrating the dead. I mean, they were desecrated the minute they got here. That's probably true. I mean, blue monster is a little bit more uh, tanky, but that's fine. I don't even know what kind of weapons. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's what I, about. I was just about to point that out to you, but you wouldn't stop talking. I'll never stop talking. And then he proceeds to stop talking. I'll never stop talking. All right, we just got ourselves <laughs> our first gen weapon. Oh, um, <laughs> we, I, I just saw a chromatic there. Uh, all right, so I, I don't want to get too deep into some of the things, but uh, you notice how, oh, I didn't tell you, I have an item filter. You may want to turn this on. So under UI, uh, list of item filters, I have mine set to default. Uh, I mean, there's plenty of, uh, never sync is a good one too, but I mean, I don't want to get into that. Default is something you will have. On your uh, on your path of exile, uh, so you just set that to over to default, and this item that just dropped is has a green border around it. Why is that? Well, it has three sockets. It's linked. You get uh, red, green, blue, and they're linked together, and that's important because when you sell it to a vendor, it's actually a recipe. Um, it's an item that's important because it gives it, when they sell it, it gives you a chromatic orb, which is nice for getting currency kind of really well. Because you want to you want to basically mass currency for what is essentially the end game, uh, you know. Because you're gonna want to reroll like good items that you get, which is why you don't really want to waste it too much now. But if you waste a bit, you know, uh, I mean, more power to you. It ain't gonna kill you. Yep. And this green just make people mad. Over. Yep. How we, dare you actually do that? And we got our medium life potion, so we got a we got a one up from our other one, and this one's even quality. Oh, there's a belt there. And there's also a belt, which gives us a bit more increased physical damage. And the rest of this isn't really for me. I mean, we're not really wand users. We don't use energy shield as a defense, so we don't really want any items that kind of give us energy shield. Um, I mean, Pat might want that, but who knows what the fuck he's doing. I don't even know what I'm doing. I mean, you don't have a lot of identify scrolls, um, but at, at this stage in the game, it's really not that important to, I like, every little thing to identify it but i mean i'll just i'm just going by like what i what i go like this for this time for example this might be a decent helmet because it has armor and energy shield it's better than, it's certainly better than what i have but it's blue and i don't care because well, the iron greaves might be good they got three linked red sockets you know go put some cool red things in there there well, yeah i don't have boots right now i guess i'll take that too i mean sometimes i forget um, I'm gonna head down the attack speed path because I've done a slow build before and I fucking hated it. Um, Mike, you gotta go slow. I, I think we're done here, aren't we? Yeah. Don't you want to kill things? I mean, killing things is like 90% of what an ARPG is about. I mean, I guess, but I'm going back to town, so fuck off. Oh my god. So. Oh. Use that. We're back to town. And back to the lobby. Talk to some people. I'd almost stop believing in miracles. This medicine chest, it's greater than the serums and salves it holds. It tells us that we can do more in Rayclass than merely suffer. I've not much to offer in return, but please, take something and thanks for what you've done. Alright, you always get these same rewards from this quest. I always take the Quicksilver. I mean, there's really no case that you never want this. Cause you, get, you gotta go fast. It's it's such a, it's more rare of a flask and these one and like you use it all the time opposed to these other ones, you're going to get upgrades real fast for these. Like, you're going to get upgrades soon. Like, you saw how I just went from small to medium life flask, right? You know, so... We're going to take that one for us, and now let's talk to Besto. Oh, well. So, you managed to salvage Shaky Ann's druggery. Nicely done. Nessa will put it to good use. More than that benumbed quack Optin ever did. Got a job for you, if you're willing. There's a pool near the mud flats needs investigating. You'll smell it before you see it. Stinks like a carcass in high summer, but that's not the worst of it. Dead birds walking. Animals don't rise up again the same as people do here. So if they aren't raising themselves, what's doing it for them? 
the answers in that fetid pool. Clear the place out and kill whatever's raising those rowers. We've got enough living dead to contend with already. <clears throat> Alright, we gotta go to the fetid Stay pool. Sharp out there. There Sounds are... delicious. I'm just gonna go Hello. sell some of these items. So, oh, actually wait, let me not sell that guy, because I'll show you what happened. So, sold a bunch of it. And if we sell here, oh, we gotta go to Hyde Buckler. Sells for one chromatic, just like I said. Michael Lott never lies. Now we have an extra one of those. Farewell. And so we have this Quicksilver Flask. I'll use this nice transmute orb that we have to add some properties to it, because we're going to be using it for a very long time. This one gives us a bit of charge recovery, so that's not so bad. So put that in the last slot. So now, whenever we use that, we'll run 30%, oh, sorry, 40% faster. So we can put all the rest of this junk currency that we don't need inside our stash, and then we can be on our merry way. But that will be for next episode, so take care, everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye, everybody.